Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Gayla Tia Strong. I'm a physical therapist who got 100% on my NPTE and this led me to found SPT with me, which is an NPTE prep platform. If you enjoy what you see and you're studying for the NPTE, check out our courses at spt.withme.com. Now for what you're actually here for, let's talk about the shoulder capsular pattern. So first of all, what is a capsular pattern? Well, this is a pattern that we would find with respect to passive range of motion deficits that might occur if a person's joint capsule is involved. It could be irritated, it could be thickened, or really just anything that deals with the joint capsule. So let me explain with an example. So let's say a person comes into your clinic and they're complaining of shoulder pain. So our goal is to figure out what the source of the pain is. You know, is it due to a muscle? Is it a tendon? Is it the capsule? Their articular cartilage, is that wearing down? You know, is it a labrum? You know, something's going on with the bone, like a fracture. So what is the tissue source? Well, there are certain tests that we can do to identify if it's a muscle issue. For example, you can do MMTs. You can stretch the muscle. You can palpate the muscle. You can do special tests. Then there are certain tests that you could do to identify if it's a ligamentous issue. So you can palpate the ligament, test the integrity of the ligament. You know, you can see if there's a little bit more play or more give between the two bones where that ligament connects. The same idea goes with identifying if there is something going on with the joint capsule. So this is where the capsular pattern comes in. So a way that you can identify that potentially the joint capsule is involved is by looking at your patient's range of motion. So you're going to take your patient through their entire range of motion in all planes. So for the shoulder, you're going to measure with the goniometer their shoulder flexion, abduction, internal rotation, external rotation. So the concept of the capsular pattern is that if a joint capsule is involved, not only are you going to expect to see passive range of motion deficits in general, but you are going to expect to see that there is a trend or a specific pattern in this range of motion deficit. In particular, for the shoulder, the trend is that when you take your patient through their entire ranges of motion in all planes, we're going to find that their external rotation will be the most limited compared to all other ranges of motion. The second most limited range of motion is going to be abduction. Then the third most limited is going to be internal rotation. Now, does this mean that their flexion range of motion will not be limited and they're going to have a full 180 degrees or that their extension is completely fine. The answer is no. I'm going to expect that if someone has adhesive capsulitis, which is a condition where the joint capsule is involved, I'm going to expect to see that there are range of motion deficits in all planes, in all directions. Now, of course, it depends on how severe their condition is, but it would not surprise me if it did. Now, the ratio and the proportion of how much each of these planes, their range of motion respectively, how each of these is going to be affected is what the capsular pattern is all about. So you're evaluating your patient and you're measuring passive range of motion and you find that their external rotation is completely fine while their internal rotation is the most limited, then this is not a capsular pattern. And this is because in this case, internal rotation would be the most limited. But in the capsular pattern, as you can see on this slide, it has to be external rotation being the most limited. So this is the capsular pattern of the shoulder. When we learn about topics, one of our favorite questions to ask to help us really understand is the question of why. And in this case, why do we have this specific pattern? And as much as I do want to give you a straightforward answer, unfortunately, there's a reason that these things are theories versus facts. And that's because they are not proven. And if anything, they're actually inconsistent. So there are a lot of studies that show that, yes, there is capsular thickening, so it must change the kinematics of our glenohumeral joint, and it's going to occur in this direction specifically because those posterior fibers are tightened or the anterior fibers are tightened, etc. Okay, but there are other studies that show that it doesn't even matter if one side is thickened or not. So it doesn't change the kinematics at all. So essentially, if you're looking for the answer that holds the mechanism and the physiology or pathophysiology behind why capsular patterns occur, I will say at this point in time, you're not going to find it because it's inconclusive. Capsular patterns are based on clinical findings and not research. As I mentioned before, this is inconsistent. The presence of a capsular pattern upon our objective evaluation can definitely help us justify that the joint capsule is the tissue source of our patient's presentation. However, that's not the end all be all. 
Because there's no physiological mechanism to this pattern, this goes to show that this pattern, the capsular pattern, may not and really does not always play out as expected. So let's say a person's coming to you and you do not see the capsular pattern. This patient could still have the joint capsule being involved. Now, with that being said, there are other findings that can help us rule that in, like joint mobility. Now, this idea of, wait a second, it doesn't need to happen all the time? Yeah, I mean, this kind of makes it more confusing. However, understand that in our practice, this stuff happens all the time. For example, just because someone has an ankle fracture or a hip fracture doesn't mean that they absolutely 100% cannot tolerate weight bearing. People can and they do walk when they have fractures. But here, when we're learning, we're being told to look out for a person who is non-weight bearing to be able to justify that they have a fracture. We as PTs, you have to understand that we don't have x-ray vision. We don't have MRI vision during our sessions. And it's because of this that we have to have a lot of tools in our pocket to be able to figure things out. So a capsular pattern can help us figure things out, but it is not the only way. If you enjoy being taught material this way and you're studying for the NPTE, check out our courses at spt.withme.com.